Uh, hi everyone and uh, welcome to my channel. Um, I thought I would uh, make a little video about setting up and running a 1980s uh, Sinclair computer, ZX Spectrum computer, in the 21st century. And since there seems to be a lot of people interested in this uh, computer, in this hobby, um, I'll just give you some of the basics of how to set one up in the modern age and uh, some of the most important do's and don'ts. So um, what I have here is a, um, f uh, this is a standard 48 kilobyte uh, computer from the 1980s. Now it has a, not an original case because this is actually a board that I got to work. I got the board only, and then I bought a case, which you can get from um, Retro Radio Next. I'll put in my in the description. Um, but otherwise, it's inside. It's identical, and the keyboard is pretty much what the original was like in the 1980s. Um, now, to run one, what you need is a few things. Um, I would recommend something like this. This is an old LCD monitor that has multiple different inputs. Um, if you look on the back and the the connections, uh, this is the TV out, which has been modified for composite. These are the two tape out, tape input and output. This is the edge connector, and this is the power socket. Now the most important things to note is the yes, if you have one of the original spectrums, the original case, this will have this will not be this color. It'll have markings like RF. It'll say ear, mic, edge connector, and power. Now you don't have to have a standard. Uh, sorry, you don't have to have an original power supply unit. In fact, it's probably better if you don't have one. But there's a couple of things very important to note. Uh, do not fit any one that will fit because the most important part is that the polarity has to be center negative, otherwise you'll fry. Um, fry your spectrum, not irreparable, but certainly it'll cost you and you need somebody who knows how to do it. Uh, the other thing is with peripherals, we're used to in the 21st century, you can plug things in and out like USB things, any mouse or keyboard, no problems, but um, you never, never plug in any peripheral in and out while the power is on. And this applies to most, uh, I think, 80s and 90s computers. Okay, so, so here's my TV cable, and this has been composite modded which is which means that the output is now composite rather than RF it gives you a clearer picture and you don't have to chew anything but it comes out of the same point so uh, yep this. and I need the power so I have a non-standard one. It's set to nine volts. If you have it over, slightly over, it's not a big deal. If the regulator is fairly uh, tolerant, what you don't want is to be under, because then it will behave strangely. You won't fry anything, but it will behave strangely. Um, so you want nine to 12, even 14 volts. But the most important thing is the tip. If you have a standard one, lucky you. I don't, I haven't had one for years. Mine died years ago. So you have one of these, which is non-standard, and you'll notice on it that it has an invertible tip. I have the tip is to negative, so this is a negative, and this is a positive. This is invertible, and this has been set to tip negative. The other thing that's important is the current. The originals were 1.2 to 1.4 amps. 
this does one amp and it works quite fine. I think in standard operation without any peripherals attached it runs about 700 I think thereabouts. But this will work this works just fine. So the most important thing is is for the voltage to be correct you have at least about, a, about an amp so a thousand uh, about a thousand milliamps and most importantly that the tip is negative. Okay, there is no reset button on this and over the years, all the wear and tear and spectrum for me, the real pain was the power socket. In and out, in and out. So let's get this on. And there you go. And if everything works well, this is the prompt you should be agreed with. Okay, you are in the basic editor. And so if you're not used to the system, it's uh, quite, you know, a little bit daunting at first, but all the keys and all the keywords are on the keyboard. For me, it's second nature. So, for example, you want, um, say, P is for print, right? Press print, does nothing, you're not printing anything. Um, the board B is for border. And the colors are one, uh, zero to seven, zero being black, seven being white. So border one, press B, so press B and B2. I'm only pressing one key, I'm not writing the whole thing. B3, and so on. Border six, you check the colors, great. So you say, for example, you're a very basic program. You start with a line, say 10. You press the P button, it gives you print. Now being a string, you have to put some quotation marks for that. You use symbol shift and P. There it is, symbol shift P gives you quotation marks. So I say hello. Okay, things are either done with uh, shift, cap shift, or cap shift and symbol shift together to give you the extra keywords. Hello, YouTube. Yep, there's your program. R is for run. Press R. Okay, so let me set it up so that I can load you something from tape. 